so what we'll do today is formation of precipitate some chemical reactions result in the formation of precipitates the given activity shows the formation of precipitate during a chemical reaction now my dear student first of all you should know what is a precipitate so a precipitate is an insoluble solid formed as a result of a chemical reaction that means uh, let's uh, take a very common example that we generally do in our home that is a lemon juice is a clear liquid take clear liquid lemon juice then take clear milk without any solid then mix these two liquids milk and lemon juice you see curd is formed and the curd is insoluble solid so these precipitates out that means curd is formed as a precipitate so similarly what happens here is uh, we are taking two beakers in one beaker we are taking potassium iodide and in the other beaker we are taking lead acetate solution then the beaker that is on the floor is having lead acetate solution and the beaker which is hold it in the hand contains potassium iodide, uh, potassium iodide then slowly this potassium iodide is added in this beaker containing lead acetate solution initially both of these liquids are very much clear they are colorless but on adding potassium iodide you can see yellow color solid is forming yellow color solid is forming so that means what happened is solid is formed as a result of the mixing of these two clear liquids a solid is formed and it is settling down because it is insoluble it is insoluble that means an insoluble solid is formed which is also called precipitate so you can see yellow color precipitate is formed out here so it forms potassium acetate that means uh, which compound is this which has got this yellow color it is potassium it is lead iodide so when you are mixing these two substances potassium iodide and lead acetate then lead iodide and pot uh, potassium acetate will be formed as a result of double decomposition or precipitation reaction so you can see the reaction also you can see reaction here ki potassium iodide plus lead acetate when reacts they give lead iodide which is a yellow precipitate and potassium acetate so in this way this also this also sim, uh, signals that a chemical reaction has taken place that means whenever you are adding two liquids and you are getting a solid substance or precipitate then you can be sure that a chemical reaction has taken place similarly similarly if we take dilute solution of barium chloride in a beaker and add some dilute sulfuric acid to the solution okay if we take dilute solution of barium chloride in a beaker and add some dilute sulfuric acid to the solution you will notice that the mixture becomes turbid the mixture becomes turbid soon after a white colored precipitate an insoluble substance appeared in the solution settles down at the bottom of the beaker we can filter this precipitate the precipitate or residue will remain on the filter paper and clear water is obtained as filtered so same kind of examples we can do again similarly what we can do is if we take barium chloride which is a clear which which is a colorless liquid and then dilute sulfuric acid which is also colorless when we mix this barium chloride and sulfuric acid then we can see some turbid turbid means uh, not exactly white okay you can see uh, something uh, when it, when solid forms start forming then that is turbid so you can see some turbidity turbid uh, you will notice that the mixture becomes turbid not that clear means somewhat uh, uh, somewhat uh, what do you call muddy muddy type muddy type 
okay not clear at all so that kind of torbid substance will the torbid will form and slowly white color insoluble substance will be formed so this uh, is a white color this white color precipitate is barium sulfate which is formed as a result of barium chloride reacting with sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid is formed and then uh, mind you one thing this precipitate is symbolized by downward arrow precipitate is symbolized by downward arrow you can see this downward arrow here and then another is heat evolved or released so whenever a reaction takes place whenever we mix one or two substances okay then what happen is either heat is evolved or heat is released so if we add quick lime quick lime mean quick lime means chuna in the beaker half filled with water it results in the formation of select lime a lot of heat is produced in this reaction so maybe you have observed uh, maybe uh, in at your home or not but uh, when we were very small we used to observe these things because those days uh, we used to whitewash our houses before diwali so the chuna that is found uh, easily in hardware shops in a bag of 5 kg or 2 kg that chuna we need to bring and we used to put it in tin okay containing half uh, filled liquid half filled water then after after few seconds only the water starts boiling so from where this heat has come this heat has come as a result of the reaction between chuna and water so the water starts boiling if you put egg in that egg will be boiled if you if you can keep uh, pan uh, for making tea then you can make tea also so that much heat it generates so from where has the heat come heat has come as a result of a chemical reaction so whenever something is heating before it is cool and all of a sudden it is heating means some reaction is taking place some chemical reaction is taking place so what is happening when water reacts with calcium oxide or quick lime or chuna is calcium hydroxide which is also called select lime is formed then this is the reaction you can see reaction between quick lime and water then the chemical reaction between quick lime and water can be represented in the form of the following equation quick lime plus water gives select lime plus heat energy then then to demonstrate the evolution of heat during a chemical reaction what are the materials required the test tube dilute hcl dilute sodium hydroxide solution and lab thermometer then what is the procedure take 2 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid in a test tube using the lab thermometer record the temperature of the acid in the test tube so what we are trying to do here is whether the temperature rises or not so for that we need to measure the temperature the initial temperature then again add 2 ml of dilute sodium hydroxide solution to the test tube containing dilute hydrochloric acid and again record the temperature of the solution what you will see you will see the temperature rises the temperature of the solution is higher than the temperature of the acid after adding dilute sodium hydroxide to the dilute hydrochloric acid test tube also becomes very hot so what is the conclusion in this chemical reaction the hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide to form sodium chloride which is the table salt that we use in our home and water hydrochloric acid is an acid while sodium hydroxide is a base this chemical reaction is an acid base reaction and acid base when mixed in appropriate proportions form a neutral solution such reactions are called neutralization reaction so just before this we did precipitation reaction and this is neutralization reaction so in a neutralization reaction acid reduces acid neutralizes the effect of base and base neutralizes the effect of acid so the chemical equation for the reaction you can see here with along with the release of heat energy and because of that the test tube was hot so if you dissolve a teaspoonful of ammonium chloride or urea in a test tube half filled with water and then touch the test tube 
you will feel that the test tube has become cooler than before. In this change, heat energy is absorbed. A container becomes cool when ice melts in it. If you put a small amount of glucose on your tongue, so what happens is, a container becomes cool when ice melts in it. So what is happening is, this ice absorbs the heat from the surrounding, as a result the surrounding becomes cool. Then if you put a small amount of glucose on your tongue, it dissolves and your tongue feels cool. Why your tongue feels cool and why athletes after a football and then uh, during this uh, the break for the break for uh, drinks and all, why they give glucose is because glucose is the source of instant energy and not only that, whenever glucose is taken, then the glucose takes heat from the body. Okay, glucose takes heat from the glucose, absorbs heat from the body. As a result, wherever is the glucose present, that portion will become cool. And then if you, if you put a spirit or uh, this alcohol on the opposite side of your palm, then it will dry up. And when it dry up, you feel, uh, you feel the portion cold. The portion will be, the portion will be cool. So why the portion will be cool is because from that particular portion where alcohol was there, it is absorbing heat from that portion of your body. As a result, this becomes cool. This is so because the heat, the heat energy required for these changes is taken from the surroundings, that is from your body. If you carefully examine the changes taking place around you, you will find that the energy is either evolved or absorbed during each change. So, whatever changes you see around us, all these changes, either they absorb heat or they release heat, especially if it is a chemical change. So, in fact, a change cannot take place without the involvement of energy. Energy is required to initiate all chemical reactions. So, in a chemical reaction, either energy is released or it is absorbed. Now we have seen that chemical reactions are characterized by change of color, change of state, change of smell, formation of precipitate, evolution of gas and change of energy. Here it is important to know that in a chemical reaction more than one characteristic may be displayed. So not only one characteristic only but in some of the chemical reaction more than one characteristic can also be seen. For example, burning of candle is characterized by the production of energy, evolution of gas and change of state. So this much for today, thank you.